we've just been walking over from the department and I've been getting my head round how this wonderful project works. Um, and being a practical man, I said, so if I, I go on to Tesco online tonight, how would I participate in this process if I were a parent? And I'm really here today, one, because uh, my good friend Fiona uh, asked me to come here, but two, most important of all, to say a big thank you to all of you. Um, and to you, Duncan. You're Duncan. I am Duncan. Right, because having read about what you've done uh, to establish uh, Carbon Cred, and what you've chosen to do with that part of your life in making it happen, I'm here to say thank you because, um, you know, I have a job, I've got a responsibility as the Secretary of State for the Environment. Uh, we've got the climate change bill that's going through Parliament at the moment. Britain will be the first country in the world to have a framework for trying to deal with this big uh, global challenge. But in the end, it's about what we choose to do individually, be you a government minister, be you a member of parliament, be you a parent, be you uh, whoever, that will enable us to succeed or not succeed in playing our part in tackling dangerous climate change. And the, you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the problems and the challenges that we face, we're quite used to as politicians. People come and say, what are you going to do about it? Eh? What are you going to do about it? Say people. And of course, we have a responsibility to do something about it, which is why we're putting that legislation in place and being the first one in the country to do so. That's why we've worked so hard to get climate change into the discussions involving all of the countries of the world. That's why Tony Blair, when he was Prime Minister, put climate change on the agenda for the G8 presidency alongside the cause of fighting global uh, poverty in 2005. Because, you know, of all the challenges we face in the world, I would say I'm a very lucky person because I've, you know, had two jobs in the Cabinet and I would say having responsibility alongside all of the rest of us, uh, you, for the two great challenges the world faces. One is how do we overcome the gap between rich and poor uh, and the other is how do we make sure we've got a safe and secure world in which to live in which isn't overcome by dangerous climate change. Now, you know, that's enough to, kind of, to keep us going, is it not? Uh, and being an optimist, because it's, it's how I get up in the morning, I believe passionately in our capacity as human beings to change things. Um, I always say, if you, if, you, if you doubt that for a moment, you know, pause, rewind British history 200 years and just stop and think about what life was like for most people in Britain 200 years ago. Uh, it was very, very different from life as it is today. Uh, this building is... Well, it's not quite 200 years old. It was built in the 1830s and 40s after the fire that destroyed the old one. But if the, if the masons who'd worked, or the carpenters who'd worked on this extraordinary building, walked in through the door at the back there now and heard about how society had changed, what we'd built for ourselves, the fact is they would gasp in astonishment. Now, what does that teach us is we are capable of, of rising to the most significant challenges and changing things, and we've got to apply exactly the same. Political commitment, effort, ingenuity, imagination, doing things, everybody playing their part, if we are going to uh, overcome the challenge of dangerous climate change. And I made the point, what are you going to do about it? Because if it was just a question of what we were going to do about it, if I could stand before you today and say, hey folks, climate change, I've got it. Don't worry, I've got it all under control. You just carry on with your lives. Uh, don't have to change a thing, and I'll come and give you a call in a week or a month or five years and say, got it sorted, what do you want done next? I wouldn't be telling you the truth, would I? And people say they want their elected representatives uh, to tell them the truth. I suppose the question is, are we ready to fully understand what this uh, involves? And the truth is, without each of us playing our part, we're not going to do it. Without each of us as individuals in our own country, making our contribution, we're 2% of world emissions, and we have to play our part because our bit has got to contribute to the total. We've also got to do our bit because, believe you me, when you go and talk to other countries internationally, you have more or less credibility depending on whether you're doing it yourself, frankly. Uh, which is why having a climate change bill is, is watched with great interest in other countries because they're thinking, gosh, what are you doing? How's this going to work? How's this committee on climate change going to operate? What is a carbon budget? How are you going to get the policies in place? But we're feeling our way into a world in which the phrase living within your means, which all of us understand instinctively, not least if we you know, go online and shop at Tesco's or whoever it is, because 
we know that means are you overdrawn at the bank? Are you spending more than you earn? You know, we, we, we understand that. This is the century in which that phrase has to acquire a second parallel, meaning are we living within our carbon means? Are we overdrawn at the global greenhouse bank or not? Because we know if we don't live within our means, then the consequences for the world are going to be very severe and very profound. And having been the International Development Secretary and having seen with my own eyes some of the consequences of that already, uh, last year I went to a town called Wajid in Somalia, a, a dusty place in a country that is pretty godforsaken, where 11,000 people had turned up six months earlier and were living in uh, literally the most pitiful shelters I've ever seen in my life. Uh, sticks of wood that were bent over in the sand covered in scraps of cloth, rubbish, cardboard. And I remember talking to one woman. She had a baby on her breast. She had, I think, six other children. She was living in a bender of this diameter and had been for six months. I said, where did you get the coverings for your home? She said, I stole them from the town rubbish tip. Why had 11,000 people come to live in Wajid? Because it had stopped raining where they had been living. And it was a choice of die or move. And they did what human beings have done throughout the whole of human history, and we were doing the same circumstances. They moved to a place where they could actually exist. And it is the very poorest people in the world who are already feeling the consequences of a changing climate. And we make a big mistake if we say to ourselves, but we'll be all right, because we live in a rich country. And we'll be safe because we're above sea level. And it's not going to impact upon us. If there's one lesson we have learned throughout the whole course of human history, but which we have learned even more sharply in this century, is we're in this together. We are one fragile planet. We are interconnected, interdependent as human beings, and what happens elsewhere in the end will come and affect us. And climate change is the perfect example of that, because I can't say, look, folks, I'll look after the British emissions. We will erect a great big net at the White Cliffs of Dover. We'll catch them, and we'll deal with them. And then we say to the rest of the world, will you deal with yours? Thank you very much indeed. They mingle. They express our interdependence, and we have to deal with it together. And the real reason I wanted to come here today, apart from saying thank you, is that it is by these kind of efforts and what you're doing uh, with Green Like You Mean It, and I really like the like you mean it, because in the end, it's about are we going to do it or not? Are we going to do it or not? And the measure is very simple, because in the same way, when you get your bank statement, you can see you got more money, you got less money, you're overdrawn. Every year, as a nation, we publish the figures for our carbon and greenhouse gas emissions. And the figures are either going to go up, which is really bad for the planet, or stay where they are, which is not good enough, or they start to go down. So the, the way we will measure our progress could not be clearer. And this is a world in which we have to be able to count on a new basis, then choose what we're going to do in the light of that knowledge, about the impact of our activity, but be creative and imaginative and do practical things uh, in the course of it. Because this is not about taking us all back to uh, the Stone Age. It's not about that, because we're really resourceful. We're really creative. We're really imaginative. We can change things in an extraordinary way if we put our minds to it. And what I think is so great about uh, this project is the, is the way in which you are linking with schools. Because whenever I visit a a primary school, and one of the great pleasures of our jobs, isn't it, to go and visit, well, all schools and primary schools. And I, I look at occasionally at a rather perplexed class of, you know, year three students, and I say, you know, you're not going to be running the world long after people like me are dust in the ground. And they sometimes just say, what is this man talking about? But it's true. You, you are going to be running the world. And therefore, understanding the world in which you are growing up, um, understanding the contribution that you need to make to dealing with this greatest of challenges and to be doing it now where you're at school involving governors and parents and communities. And when we see that it's possible to do this, you know what happens? We are encouraged and we say, great, we can do more of it. And, you know, in politics and in life, the most important thing we can have from uh, those who bring us into this world, those we work with, is encouragement to leave behind a better world when our time is come. And that is really what this is about. And I think you're doing a wonderful job, and I wish you all the best. Thanks. Thank